Hi, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the developer tab and how to create the simple elements for a fillable form. So you can see at the top here I've got the developer tab. If you can't see the developer tab, you need to go up to Word and you need to go to Preferences and you need to find your ribbon and toolbar. Down the right hand side here, you need to scroll down to the bottom and make sure this developer tab is checked here and then click save. Once you're in your developer tab, you'll see that there's a number of different options. So over here is your macros that has nothing to do with your fillable forms. And then you have this section here and this will be the inserts that you will use for your fillable forms. So for example, if I wanted to add a question and then I wanted to put a simple yes or no answer, press the tab key, type the word yes, press the space bar, and then I can insert a checkbox here. You can see it's greyed out at the moment, but you can take that shading off if you want to by selecting shading. Then I can hit the tab key twice and then press no, a space bar, and then a checkbox. Now these checkboxes won't work unless you have protected your form. So you can't actually click inside these checkboxes because you're currently editing the form. So if you go to protect form, now you can click inside these boxes and you'll see that there's a cross inside and then click again and that cross will disappear. And then you can do that for the same if you want to check no. So those are your check boxes. If you want to do a slightly different question, we need to firstly unprotect the form so that we can go back to editing. I'm just gonna hit the return key twice. Enter your question. And for this one, you might want several different options. I'll go on to show you how to put this all in a table in a minute, just to make it a little bit more formal and how a fillable form should look. So what are your favorite colors? So here we can go up and insert a combo box. And if we click on combo box, you can see that will appear here. So to place your options, double click inside this option box here, and you'll see you've now got a form field option. So on the drop down item, you can select all of the items that you want. Press enter, red, green, and yellow, and press enter. So now I've got all those options in there. If you want it to have a title piece at the top, then all you need to do is select, let's say color as the title press enter, you can see it's at the bottom and we need to move that one to the top if we want it as a sort of title to the box. So move it to the top using this arrow, keep clicking until it's at the top. So then just go down to bookmark and here you can place anything. So we just insert the text color and click okay. And there you can see what are your favorite colors, deselect, go to protect form, and then what you can do now is you can double click on here and you can see your options will appear. Now it doesn't, the form itself doesn't look particularly great because I've just placed in these sentences just so that you can see how these would operate. So I will come back and show you, as I say, to put in a table. So to do the last option, which is the text, if we unprotect the form again so we can carry on editing, let's put in what is your address. And then I'm going to hit the return key and the tab key. I'm going to just place the tab key between here as well. There we go. And then we can put in a text box. Now let's place the shading on again and you can now see where that text box is. Just double click inside the text box and you'll get yet another form field option. So you can place in some default text if you want to, but you can also limit the amount of text that somebody is allowed to place in the field. So you can actually in here place the maximum amount of characters. So I could place 25 characters in there. And once again, you can choose your text format and we can simply leave it as it is and it will just go to sentence case and then we can just click OK. So when they're shaded, you can see where those boxes are. So now if I go to protect the form, and then I can type in this box here. You can see my cursor's flashing, and then I can just simply type the text I need to in this box. 
and you can see it's stopped now and I can't type anymore because I've used up my 25 characters. So that's what 25 characters would look like in your text box. So if you wanted to make this a form or form, let's just unprotect form and let's just go down a few lines. If you go to insert and we'll just click on table and we'll just click on two columns and five rows. I'm just going to click on this top left button here, go to layout and I'm just going to adjust the height to one centimetre and press enter. And I'm just going to change the alignment to middle left. And then if we just place these words or this text, I'm going to copy and paste them into my table. And then just move this light middle line over. There we go. And then I can put these elements into my table. So the top one, I can actually divide this cell in half. So go to layout and go to split cells. Number of columns I want is two and one row. And then in here I can place yes. Go to the developer tab, insert my checkbox. Then in here I can put no. And again, insert my checkbox. In here, I can put my drop down again, but I should be able to copy this. Command or Control C, Command or Control V. There we go. And I can do the same for this. I can just copy this across into my table. So now I can go up and take all the shading off and you can see how that would look. Now for this one here, if I delete the text, it's actually just deleted the whole of that text box. So if we click on that again, we can see the cursor's moved. If we see the shading, you can see it's there, but it just doesn't show up if you don't want the shading. Again, double click inside, and we'll just go to 25 characters again, and click OK. So then when you protect the form, you can then yet again go back in and click on those various elements, double click here, and you can select from those options. You can see now there's a little arrow there. It doesn't always appear. As you can see now, it doesn't. So double click back on and you can select from other options. And you can also play around with this table. So you can actually take all the lines off if you don't want the lines, select the table, go to layout, go to table design, go to borders, click on the drop down and select no borders. If you want to see the grid lines, go down and see view grid lines. They won't be printed or saved as PDF, but it just gives you guidance as to where your cells are. So then you can go ahead and add further questions. So, and the last one, you can see I've actually put some default text into that text box. So when the user clicks on it, they can then go ahead and place in their own text as it will become a placeholder. So you can give the user some instruction as to what they need to type into that box. And as I say, once they select it, they just simply type over the top. So once you're happy with your form, don't forget to protect it. Don't forget to take everything out that you've perhaps played around with because you need to take the crosses off. Then make sure it's protected. Go to File. Then you can go to Save As. You can save it as a Word document or you can save it as a PDF and then click Save. So if you want further knowledge on how to create specific forms, then I will link some videos in the description below that will allow you to follow along and develop unique forms like receipts and checklists. So I hope all that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.